decide to take away first, it is the Hecarim away from Huni. You say it right there, complacency can come to bite you in the butt, but Fnatic, expect them to just straight up ban the Draven. And no get rid of to. that. And it seems like one of the teams is the least likely to get, you know, complacent because they have that veteran leadership in Yellowstar, and then they also have that fantastic coach in Daylor, and just a whole heap of talent in their roster. Yep, there is the Rumble ban as well, so the trend continues of trying to target ban the Huni. So many bans. But he still manages to find these picks. If they leave Echo open, the Rise is banned now. It could be first picked. Airwax prefers it, but still, let's see what Fnatic bans away. There's the Callista. So now Sivir becomes a very, very popular pick. Will they abandon Huni to having to delve even deeper into his champion pool, or will the Wolves let him have the Echo? Who knows, honestly, but I just want to highlight yet again, and it seems so common, but triple ban on Huni, take away one oh, of his champions. Four. Four champions challenged on Huni, and usually you see <laughs> top laners have to dig deep here, but Huni, he could easily play... But they get Silver Alistar out of this. Yeah, he could easily play Maokai, he could easily play Gnar later, and Fnatic opening with a, you know, a signature draft of a team that likes to play, you know, strategic type of gameplay. Early Silver, just like we saw H2K do, um, Kasing would have maybe here went Thresh, but Yellowstar says we'll do the job on Alistar. Later on, Rainover is likely to pick a tank. Both tier one junglers always stay up against Fnatic. This is one thing that always tends to happen. Even though you could pressure that jungle pool by banning one, forcing them to ban another, you can't because all your bans have to go to Huni. And then Rainover, in almost every single game, gets either Gragas or Rek'Sai. And they'll do it again here. We, we've got both of them open. We know that Echo is actually uh, more preferred for Airwax, so unless they want to switch things up and send it on Young Buck, Rainover has his pick of the jungle. Yeah, and I just uh, pinged our stats guy and asked him just how many times have people banned out Huni? 21 in eight games. 21 bans he's drawn personally in eight games. That is incredible. I think that's unprecedented almost. And it's not like Fnatic is the Huni show, right? Mm -hmm. To have no, I mean, anyone every really single lane. Do this. But I wonder when people will start stopping to do that and try and target a different champion pool. Maybe hit Rain over because he is the one that ties it all together for me. He's the glue for yeah. Fnatic. But now it hasn't happened. And the uh, Copenhagen Wolves are going to grab the Morgana for Unlimited. Also, the Jace comes into play against Soren. Uh, managed to not do too much on it, I would say, but it was a rough game for the Wolves all around. Let's see what they're setting. I want to do here. They're setting up a bit of a poke composition on the Copenhagen Wolves. However, Fnatic already has the hard engage to stop that. Usually, this is where you see uh, Rain over pick up the Rek'Sai. Seems to prefer that over to Gragas. He can tell doesn't have to right He now. might want some hard engage. Yeah, he can wait too, but he did favor that Olaf uh, yesterday. Uh, clearly, he's favoring it over that with those the top tier junglers. I, yeah, I can see why this is really useful because Olaf can run at you really fast in this composition. And he can just walk you through the poke as well, you know, pop that Ragnarok, get the wild go from Lulu, get the on the hunt from, uh, from the uh, Reckless right there, and then become that one man axe throwing army. That's just keep snowballing though. Initially, Olaf is pretty squishy, even though he looks like the big menacing tank coming in, but you can uh, definitely take him down quickly. If Still, you can't, you can't lock him down, and when he's low, he is a very, very threatening champion all around, and a lot of teams aren't used to playing against him. When Rainover brought it out in the spring split, it was quite unexpected. It led Fnatic, uh, who at that time were very untested, to a huge series of victories. They also take the Lulu, so this is uh, going to go over to Feb. It's possible it goes over to Huni. I suppose it's still that flex pick. It is we don't really pick. know at this point where Huni's going to go to, but traditionally, they don't to about it. giving the style of Fnatic, it's incredibly likely that the Lulu will end up in the mid lane. It's not doesn't strike me as too much of a Huni champion. I'm sure he can play it. Look at this. It's better. It works. There's no tank. They go for the Vlad, they take the Caitlyn for freeze. Yeah. So that should be Vlad top. So they have they have the part of a very, very strong poke siege come, right? But Caitlyn, if they get dove. Caitlyn, yeah, just can't get dove. P Caitlyn Jace is, is incredibly potent at taking down towers, so that's what we need to see. You know, early pressure in the lane. Caitlyn outranges Sivir. Might prompt the lane swap from Fnatic to see if the Copenhagen Wolves can call that, because Vladimir in the lane swap doesn't do too well. So that's num number one objective for Copenhagen Wolves. Match that lane. Caitlyn Morgana. Should be able to destroy Alistair Sivir. Double range advantage, CC advantage, and just more raw damage on that lane. So definitely, that's what the Copenhagen wants. They want this 2v2. And for Fnatic, and put Febivin. Interesting. Victor into his hands. That means we will have a Lulu top. So safe choice for Huni. He may take a backseat on the damage this game, but then again, as Ryu proved the other day, the other week, I like still get big picks. I like this draft from Copenhagen Wolves, except the Vladimir pick. Not too big of a fan. I feel like. You're putting too many eggs in the scaling basket as well, and if you miss your lane swap... Well, Nar was up, Maokai was up. I mean, yeah. they could have... Exactly. They could have done that. In fact, Fnatic could have done Maokai for Huni, and that would have been an even 
better lockdown comp, in my opinion, but still, but Lulu's not a bad choice. Yeah, Lulu works with the composition, you know, on the hunt, speed up, get some shields out, buff up whoever gets caught. It's extra appeal for Victor. Victor has the issue that he's a very immobile mid laner. He uh, somehow gets engaged upon. He deals a whole lot of damage, but if you want to keep him alive, yesterday we saw Fnatic pick up Victor and have the Janna with the Flash Monsoon to keep him alive. Now they have some peel from Alistar. They feel it's not enough, so they want to add a little bit of a Huni flavor to that with the Lu. Mm -hmm. But again, no hard heart, you know, lockdown from Fnatic just yet. You know, they have the Isles to Pulverize, but they usually don't need it. Yeah, that's true. And, and also, you can see what they're going to try to do, possibly. Just just get Rain over to run in there on Olaf and, and just wild growth in the moment yeah, just he starts taking damage. But go ham. It could work. We'll see if the Wolves, though, can maybe do something here. Do you guys think that's possible? Why don't you let us know with your predictions that LOL Esports is the place. CW win or FNC win are the tweets, the hashtags. That's what we want to hear. We'll read those out later on in the day. But for now, there's not a lot of Fnatic shirts in the crowd. They're definitely making some noise now as they prepare to meet the Copenhagen Wolves. Their eighth game in the split here. We're starting out onto the Rift. Now, I really want to figure out what both of these teams are going to do level one to get the lanes they want. Copenhagen Wolves on Vladimir in a solo lane. Ideally, have the jungler start on the weak side or on the bottom lane side, get to level three to protect and shadow that young buck on Vladimir, keep him alive. And Fnatic, they want to lane 12. They may indeed get it, but for now, fanned out around the map. Copenhagen Wolves are going to be going pretty deep here to try to get some vision. They might want to be trying to scout this lane swap, and Axe goes into Unlimited's face. They won't stop Copenhagen Wolves from pushing five members into this jungle. That's going to prompt the typical response from Fnatic. Let's go down to the bottom side and do the same thing to you. Now, how well have these teams studied each other? Are there patterns in their lane swap behavior? Can you trick them into doing what you want? Copenhagen Wolves, are they just gonna take this preemptive swap, stay here? I'm gonna go bottom, is Fnatic gonna say, okay, who's predicting who? I just wanna see how it turns out, I'm, I'm done trying to predict this. A lot of wards out for Fnatic uh, through that bottom jungle, but they also managed to get one around the Gromp, between the Gromp and Blue, since uh, Huni was able to move around and place that down before he backs, so they'll have a little bit more all-around vision. The one thing though, if Fnatic choose to stay bottom, they have the option to take a camp, if they want, because Copenhagen Wolves are about to reveal themselves to a ward. Yeah, so limited. if the Copenhagen Wolves want to lane bot and get a camp, they will get spotted by a ward. This is Fnatic having good vision control right here. So now they can choose. Is it too late to swap? Yes, it is. We'll have to lane this. I really like this. They knew exactly what was going on with the Copenhagen Wolves. So with all of that... Well, they didn't. They had a, a good way of finding out, but they still got the wrong lanes. Well, they had to guess beforehand, right? Yeah. So then they then they, they consign themselves to it, but still, they, have to they know what they're up against yeah. before they go through. So let's see if that's going to be enough to get them through the landing phase. As the ground is started on Fnatic side and the Krugs are started on Copenhagen Wolf side, we take our places and have our normal lanes. So Yellow Star started a heal on that Alistar, knowing he slows the ground down just a little bit, but he knows he's going to get pushed in anyways, so he doesn't need that combo on level two. Look how they're not touching any creeps and, until the very last moment, because they know they're going to get pushed, so they want that to happen as quickly as they can. Freeze. Extra shot on the minions, draw some aggro. This facilitates the push. This is two extra auto attacks that Freeze just wasted. Not in the sense that they didn't do any damage, but in the sense that they pushed quicker. Same here, Unlimited. You know, he's poking on the bot lane. Every time you auto attack within minion range, you draw aggro. So that's what Yellowstar is trying to do. He's just like, hit me, just hit me in the face. Make my minions attack you. Your minions attack my minions. We don't lose any creeps. And then we can farm on the tower. And now we have to see how well can Yellowstar and Reckless see us on the tower. How well can Young Bucks yes on the Question for both of them right now. So Dark Binding goes a little bit wide. Rainover though is making his trip down bottom. Let's see if he stops for a side of crab first. Nope. Actually, yeah. Okay, let's take it. Let's take one. Let's take two. There we go. Get himself a little bit of early vision. He has to, to be careful of the counter pressure. gank. So he can't set up for this gank here because he's smart enough to know that that one that will be warded. He knew where Airwax started as well. He started on the Grom, so he knows exactly what pattern of jungle Airwax is in, and he might actually go find him. Oh, he might. There's the ward down. Airwax is low. He's got to back away from this Raptor now. He's going towards him on the aggro. Turns his attention to Rainover. Should be able to pick that one up. But Airwax jumps in. He gets it. Secure it. There we go. The axe slows him down. Rainover's ghosting in. Parallel Convergence coming down, and he throws it in. One more. There's the shield. Airwax stays alive, but it was a close miss. Expensive Raptor. Yeah. And now he can go back to bottom. He finds the jungle first. Instead of running the risk of getting counter gank, he takes out threat number one, which is jungle, and he can now dive behind that bot lane. Yellowstar going for the minion taxi. He wants a Q flash. Unlimited is there. He gets 
chunked out a little bit. There goes the Dark Binding, and Rainover takes a lot of damage in return. He'll have to back away, but that does buy Reckless and Yellow Star some time on the minions. As Huni, it gives them breathing lane. Exactly what they need. They got pushed to the tower. Look at the CS differential on the bottom lane. Ten CS down on Reckless. So this is why we wanted to see that lane swap come out. Because Young Buck, he's even, and still has his teleport against Huni. So he's he's going okay. If he would have gotten lane swapped upon, he would have been really far behind, and we will see the a reiteration of yesterday, because Vladimir doesn't have that utility that Lulu brings to the table. Lulu yeah. from behind with Valkdorf is still fine. So Fnatic's okay with this, but again, it's not the ideal start for them. So they really weren't able to make as much done since it took a while for the Wolves to really reveal themselves. Reckless spell shields, the Dark Binding from Unlimited. But now he's starting to catch up. He's still 10 CS down, though, as you mentioned. We'll take a look at this mid lane. Sorn and Febivin, it's been pretty much dead on even. So you said earlier, Febivin. It's on a very ah, immobile the signature mid. gank from. There we go. From Echo. I've seen this before. Battle conversion. Face dive one. The Febivin, he's gonna have to flash it. He respects it. Yesterday we saw people hesitate. See the parallel over conversions come out and then die to that gank. Almost seems better for mid laners to ward your own Raptor camp against an Echo these days. Because this is the third time in three jungle Echo games that we've seen this. I think we've seen Svenskern do it as well. Mm -hmm. Hide in the Raptors. Parallel conversions. Wait two seconds. Face dive dash over the wall and then try and land that all attack, extended all attack gap closer on the mid lane. Very good against immobile mid lane. He's getting a lot of practice on this jungle echo as well. Now he's found Huni. He's Rain over. with the convergence. Rain over's there for the defense, but still nothing doing for Fnatic. They're not really able to find an answer to him just yet. He's a little low on mana, so Airwax won't be able to make any more shenanigans happen for just a minute, but still, he's perfectly fine. Take stock of the two junglers though too. What are they both doing right now? They're both trying to get respective lanes ahead. It seems to be working fairly well for both of them. They're just the insurance policy for every every one of their laners right now. And Copenhagen Wolves, they can be very happy with this start. Look at Young Buck. Yesterday he was down in the biggest CS at 10 differential that we've seen so far in the split. Now he's actually just four CS down against Huni. Mm -hmm. Against Huni, you might as well call that a lead. We still got four more minutes to go before we figure that one out, but I don't see that changing anytime soon, you're right. So meanwhile, Freezen Unlimited are still keeping that lead over Reckless and Yellowstar. That CS differential is 11. It hasn't grown by much, but look at this. Rainover's coming down again. Is he going to get spotted? There is a ward in that brush. It's so hard to gank this lane, because Yellowstar has to oh! tell, yeah, he has to telegraph yeah. the move. That's what it means, you know, they, they, that distance is too big. Go They're to still the going for it, though. Please? He is very low. Do they have enough to take him down, forcing the summoner hill? Reckless checks very deep into this one. They don't quite have it. So that will mean that they're just going to have to settle for getting a little bit more pressure. Yeah, if you're outside of combo range, usually, yes, you can do minion taxi, which is W to the minion, and then Q flash forward to close the gap. But you always have that black shield. And the second Yellowstar dashes to the minion, Unlimited knows what's coming. He doesn't have to like react to it. He can just predict it. Like, why would Yellowstar dash to the minion? Of course, he's going to Q flash. Black shield preemptively. And he dodges the Olaf. Good reaction from Copenhagen Wolves. However, this losing matchup is only down still the 10 CS that it was earlier. And you kind of expect this if you have to take the 2v2. Mostly due to the pressure from Rainover, though. Usually, Rainover uses his pressure to get Fnatic ahead. Freeze is really low hanging around here, though. This is dangerous. And now he used the pressure to stop them from getting behind. But Freeze, he did drop low, but Olympton, he can just put the pool in the brush right here. I imagine that's what he's going to do. See if his gold ticks. All right. Or the binding just disappears. It means you hit an angry cow. All the more angrier. So for the time being, Reckless will have a little bit more breathing room. While the first back happens for Freeze, he picks up his BF sword. Easy peasy. He's fine backing on that amount of money. So even though he got chunked out, he has the ideal face timing for a Caitlyn. So he had no, left enough, over too. enough talk about the bot lane. Let's move it around though, right? because Hooney's been pretty much back and forth a little bit with Young Buck. There's been some help from Airwax in that department as he's hanging around to the top, helping Soren get his blue. And Soren has actually kept pretty even pace with Feb in here. I want to see what happens between in this uh, Victor and, of course, Jace matchup. It's a lore battle, really. Mm -hmm. I'm too much informed about the lore. What I do know is that usually when you look at scaling compositions, like the one from Wolf, you would say even is ahead. Because if you stay even in the early to mid game, that means you'll eventually get ahead in the late game. But also, usually when you look at Sivir compositions, even is also ahead because you just want to wait to level 6, group on an objective, try to take that down. I want to see Fnatic secure a tower or a dragon soon for Copenhagen Wolves scale too much. Yeah, so for the Wolves, yes, they kept the Sivir down. That doesn't really mean as much as you just said. If they go ahead and get an early dragon, that'll get them, on, that'll get them rolling, but I feel like Fnatic is a team that's not going to easily give this up. The Crab 
is already taken down. They'll have that vision available if there is a movement by the Wolves, but they seem more content in just letting lane phase play out for the time being. No, in terms of Dragon Pressure, right now it's, it's the Wolves that have to stop Fnatic from getting it. The Wolves are still scaling right now. They still want to get into late game with that Polk on Jace, with that Vladimir. Um, they just want to prevent Fnatic from getting that early Dragon. If they can stall it into like 12, 13 minutes, that slows down the third potential Dragon into a very comfortable timing. Uh, yet again, we see that range advantage right here. Reckless has to farm into two, two champions with bigger range than him. And they have the Black Shield to counteract the, the very obvious combo that Yellowstar will have to do. I'll heal for a lot there, so I imagine, yeah, just take a look here and here. Yellowstar has three points into that heal, so less team fight value. You know, no up value in Pulverize, no more, like, less cooldown on Headbutt, so everything into the heal just to survive that lane. Meanwhile, Soren has actually developed himself a little bit of a lead here. Let's take a look at those Dragon Timers. It's very, it takes a very long time for the Wolves to usually get this one. They're not too worried. It's their average, but Soren, he's going in. Chaos Storm's down. He has to flash away from this. Rainover gets on the run. The Teleport comes in from Huni. The Axes are flying. They've targeted out Airwax. Let's see if they can take him down. Another Teleport flashing on in. Looking for Ooh. Storm. Wild Growth on the Olaf, and he should be able to secure First Blood. There it goes. Still running through. Febivin providing extra fire. A double kill for Rainover. The Olaf is going wild. Ragnar rock and roll, and Unlimited goes down as the rest of Fnatic collapse around. Rainover finally falls. And this is why oh. Huni is the carry of Fnatic. A fight breaks loose, initiated by the Copenhagen oh, Wolves in the mid luck. lane. Goodbye. And Huni arrives with his teleport before Youngbuck even starts channeling his. He gets in there, he gets a two-man wild growth. He takes down somebody else, and he carried that fight so hard for Fnatic, because this is Copenhagen Wolves initiating this play. And Huni reacts quicker than the Copenhagen Wolves' top laner. And you give Fnatic an inch, they'll take a mile. Let's watch that again. So, look, this is not Fnatic starting this play. They go on even. Look at the teleport right now. One, two, three, four, five. He lands. And then go back. Now Youngbug starts coming in. Look at the wild graph. Two man knock up on Olaf. Exactly what we said was going to happen. Youngbug hits one guy with ultimate. Botlane coming in as well. Freezes late to the party. Unlimited flashes in, but there's nothing he can do. And then they somehow keep Rainover alive long enough for them to just convincingly win that fight. Mooney gets protected by his teammates. Everybody wants to take the bullet. Uh, the bullet. Eventually, Youngbug drops. And that's... We went from such a stale early game to explosion. That's a Fnatic game in a nutshell. They just, they buy their time, they wait for a minute, they react quicker, especially Huni on that teleport. And now this Dragon, it should be free. They're taking their time about it. Unlimited is gonna send a binding that way, but it'll just help Fnatic secure this one up. First Dragon, first Blood, four kills to one. They've got themselves 2,000 gold ahead, Krapo, and this is just looking like a Fnatic game by the numbers to start. And I almost, I wonder how does this make the Copenhagen Wolves feel? They must regret going for that play, and somewhere along the lines it went wrong. They could have. Could have had so much, ended up with so little. They had that advantage, but Reckless is good at playing these losing matchups and just going even, because mm -hmm. he knows he knows his team has his back, and he knows eventually Rainover will show up and shadow that lane. And now they're looking for a dive on the bot lane. It seems your camera. There we go. Unlimited, very low. Rainover running on through. You can't stop him when he's Ragnarokin and Freeze trying to jump back. Heals to stay alive longer. Rainover so will take the last tower shot, but he doesn't go down. Again, Fnatic with a successful dive, two pickups. He can take a tower from here. We went from bang on even to 3,000 gold lead at 13 minutes. Roughly a three minute span. Fnatic, their foot on the pedal. They saw what H2K did in their game, and they said, you know what? We can do that too. Yeah, right now they're on pace to do it, but still, Fnatic just master strokes, playing this one out so well in the beginning. Yeah, completely mirrored, right? You're losing bot lane ever so slightly. Oh. Just bring more folks to the party. Dive them. You have Alistar. Press W, press R. Watch that power hit you six times in a row without taking any damage. Yep. And Huni now strong enough to deal with Young Buck solo. Oh, not quite oh yet. okay, maybe not. Oh, wild well, growth force to Soren and jumps on in. Whimsy to get away. Hemo Plague doesn't do enough damage, but Soren closing the gap. He's under tower range. Slowed by the Glitter Lance. Does he have a shot? No, oh, Huni he misses. Huni, Huni, Huni. Huni, Huni. He manages to escape right there. The crowd. They're loving it. Young Buck's in trouble. He has to go under the tower. Yellow Star stopped by the binding, but man, those fancy feet to dodge out Soren's shock blast. What a play. Oh, 
What a play. He does. He did everything right to get out of there. Still a little bit of help on Copenhagen. Wolves decided to allow him to escape, but... Somehow it happens every game, right? We say, who, who needs a couple in carry? We say, Lulu, nah, you can't carry on that. That's utility. That's, he's not going to play that. Teleports in the mid lane. Full six seconds ahead of, uh, of Young Buck. Perfect wild growth, and now suddenly he finds himself 0-0-4. Oh, oh they threw three bands at this guy. First picked away his next favorite champion. And he still does this. And he still has Can more you champions. you stop this No, guy? you don't. I think people should really st stop banning Huni and start looking at hitting other champion tools. Static is so used to having everything open for them. Like this Olaf, like this Alistar. They're now and they take what they want. Buff. It's not your blue buff, that's our blue buff. So, we're just about shy of 15 minutes into the game. Fnatic's got this gold lead of 4,000. Hang on. They're going to grab another tower. With okay, 4,000 and some change. About five now. Give or take. Yeah, you know, it's just counting it up. They're trying to match what H2K was able to do earlier. Youngbuck's going to find me in this crush. But they own this map. Look at the wards. They've got them all over the jungle of Copenhagen Wolves. Yeah, I love I love the triple pink ward lineup. Oh, God. Dueling, throwing that oh, pixie boy. in Youngbuck's face. Help, picks. One, He's two. going to die the flash. Oh! Out of this? Nope. Yeah, yes. yes. Well, Grove. Hello. Calculated. Calculated aggression. Mooney Potter. The boy who lived. Look at those glasses. Really yeah, is. look at those pink wards that Fnatic has placed in the river right now. They're they're line number one. And then they back them up and they give offensive vision to defend those pink wards and just completely control the river. And a one, two, three on the left side. One more deep in the red jungle, too. One tower going down here. Copenhagen Wolves, they're back against the wall. Airwax going try. in. Febivin targeted by Airwax, who has to turn his attention over to Rainover, who's Ragnar rocking. And the Hemo Plague comes out as Youngbuck joins the fray, but Yellowstar stops him up for just a minute. He's looking Reckless. for Febivin. He's going to go down without getting the kill. The Chaos Storm comes out. Now Soren, Airwax, Unlimited Freeze, all on the run. The ace in the hole. Looks like it was spent. I was wrong about that one. But Airwax going low. They get one for none. They keep on pushing another tower. That gold lead just keeps on growing. Now when somebody gets caught, Fnatic presses the panic button and everybody rushes to help their fellow teammates. Yellowstar comes in, fantastic peel, forces Youngbuck to flash aggressively and he just wants to finish them off. Uh, gets Victor in the face. You gave credit to Yellowstar in the beginning for, for having this game plan, having the, the calm, decisive shot calling. No, immaculate game immaculate, plan. Immaculate, so let's go with that. But Fnatic, as a team, react to it just so quickly. They don't question a thing. Yeah, look where Huni is right now. And he somehow, I think, he managed to find his way into this fight. Youngbuck teleports in for the flank. Pepperman, he has such good awareness because he gets flying from the top, yet he flashes to the top himself, you know? It's it's a little contradictory. Huni is now teleporting in. They force Youngbuck into the choke, and Yellowstar, he has the front. And such good awareness from Fnatic members. Usually when you get flanked from one side, your immediate reaction is to flash to another. You know, get as far away from the threat as you can. Everyone, he's watching his minimap. He says, okay, there's only one threat here, four below me. Let's just flash up into my teammates. Let them help me. Yeah. Kill Youngbuck to boot. And Fevin, even more gold. For as much as he's been targeted this game, they haven't been able to take him down. He's gotten exactly where he needs to on this victor. It's, it's 17 and a half minutes. He's on an item and a half. He's starting to get into a scary picture. Honestly, and opening wolves can't handle. You're right when you say that. I often forget about Fevin when I'm watching these games because I'm always looking you know, as a bot lane lane myself. Watching the bot lane and you can't not look at Huni, the magnificent beast that he is. Fevin is just so consistent in what he brings to the Fnatic lineup. Very rarely will you see him drop the ball to the point where it costs Fnatic, if at all. And fantastic MSI performance as well. He's really grown as a player. Absolutely. And all of Fnatic, the evolution of this team has just been, well, it's been glorious so far. Dragon up and available. Rainover and Yellowstar with the help of Reckless and Bebovic should polish it off nice and quick. Copenhagen Wolves just don't seem to have a reaction. Even if they move out, they're going to be spotted by wards all over the map. Yeah, and just to. Further exemplify what Fnatic wants to do with their lineup. They send in Rainover. That's the thing, right? And it looks it looks silly on paper, but then eventually they want to buff him up with Wild Glow. Use the proxy slows from Huni. And to facilitate Rainover getting in there, in there, well, the Grom battle ensues. They build two movement speed items. In addition to on the hunt, they have Righteous Glory, Talisman of Ascension. If Fnatic want to fight, they will get it. There is no way the Wolves can outrun them. Unless they have five acceleration gates from Jason, even then. So much move speed on the lineup, which makes up for the lack of hard CC other than the pulverize. 
and then eventually the Wild Grove come home. Yeah, and they, they've got that. We've already seen it once happen with Rainover just runs headlong into the team, and the moment they start chasing him down, or rather jumping on him, Mooney just pops the Wild Growth. Yellowstar gonna take a Shock Blast, but he's a big cow. He'll get over it. Copenhagen Wolves don't really have any control over these lanes. They're gonna try to get a bit back in the top. Young Bucks pushing against the Tier 1 tower. Finally, he'll get a little help from Unlimited, but he's gotta back away. This isn't safe against Fnatic. Yeah, they don't have control because they didn't play to their strengths. They didn't have to brawl or fight. They had to scale, group up and poke. With their composition, what they want to do is avoid fights. They want to put Fnatic in a position where they are poked so hard, get out vision controlled, and lose their objectives without taking any like kills or deaths in the process. That's what the Wolves wanted to do with their first four picks. Then they added the Vladimir, which gave it a bit of a team fight component later on, but I feel it could have been a different pick. It went even in the lane, but didn't really mesh well with the Wolves' lineup. They don't have this dive that yeah. you comp right. Caitlyn wants to siege and poke, put the traps. Morgana wants to defensively use the binds. Echo wants to lure people in and then re-engage eventually or have the dis disengage zone with the W, but Jason and Caitlyn are the main parts of this composition. They wanted to poke, but we've never seen Copenhagen was poke. They haven't been able to do it. The lane phase was all they really thought about, and it seemed that Fnatic fully punished them. Baron has now hit the field. We're 20 minutes in. We know Fnatic, they're one of those teams that will just go for it when they're up enough. You usually don't get it till about 27 and a half in, a little longer Copenhagen Wolves, but that team is not in a position to try and even stop a Baron at this point. Fnatic is just going to pressure the Wolves until they're absolutely sure that all the wards are gone. Keep this pressure up for a while. Reckless aggressively taking that binding. Chunk kind of unlimited. Rainover goes around the side. Airwax looks to catch him, but he doesn't give as good as he gets. Fnatic still trying to polish off this tower. Oh, and they can oh, rotate to mid. Minions in the mid. Yeah, they can just move that way. Airwax goes in. Those are the time winder. Slows down Yellow Star, but company walls are grouped up here. They can't get much done. Meanwhile, the tower's going down. And that's exactly what they need to do. They put two members in between, saying, either you stop us here and you come poke us and you give up the power, or we just facilitate the rotation to the mid lane if you're in it Copenhagen Wolves have a couple of wards spread out. Two minutes left on most of them. But darkness in the Baron pit. Fnatic looks to maybe take their time about this one, trying to bait it out while Huni goes down and clears out Botwave. He's got Teleport up. He'll be able to get into the fight if needed. Copenhagen Wolves could be walking into a trap. And they're fine waiting Huni's TP out. Most teams, or some teams, will go for a five-man bait here. Fnatic know that four is enough with the Teleport from Huni in the flank or in the back, and they don't want to lose that massive wave on the bot lane. Right now, they're fine doing nothing with some of their members, but they always respect the minion waves. They don't allow themselves to get rotated on in the mid lane if this bait fails. They say, okay, they're not batting immediately. Well, let's push out our lanes first and try again. Some teams you see trying to bait too long and then get rotated upon in the mid lane like they could have done here, you know. They haven't dropped a single tier one tower in the mid or bot lane, even though that's where the most turret pressuring champions are, Jace and Caitlyn. And honestly, that top tower is really only taken because of the insane amount of pressure they tried to put on me, which, by the way, didn't get a kill. Yeah, Campalu was still buffer teammates. 22 minutes on the clock. Fnatic are now about 9,000 gold ahead of the Copenhagen Wolves. Massive. It's huge. We thought the lead against H2K was big. I mean, Fnatic, once again, they just are able to do it the same as well. They continue to apply pressure all over the map. Copenhagen Wolves do grab a bit of vision around Baron, but they'll be able to sense if Fnatic do try to rush it, but Fnatic don't need to. They have no need to make any rash decisions because they have complete control of this game and they're not letting go. Yeah, watch Huni. Pushes down mid lane, pops Whimsy, moves down to the bot lane. Melee wants to push that again. Peppermint takes over the mid lane then in regard. Reckless is still solo pushing top lane. Has the backup vision around the Wolves to safely do that up until the point where the tier tower used to be. So he has offensive pressure all the way into the enemy side of the map. Peppermint is respecting the zone control. He's not going any farther. He doesn't have the vision to do so. Huni knows he's unlikely to get camped by more people right there in the bottom lane. So he can overextend because if more... It takes about two, two people at least to kill Huni. That's enough for Fnatic to start the Baron, so... And it's worth it. Looks so, it looks so easy for them. Everything is done with great calculation and with great foresight. That foresight may well net them this game. They do win this one and a, in a row, 8 and 0. Well on their way but to the biggest win streak. Yeah, that record 9, that Fnatic of 2013, the Spring holds that one. 
Here we go. They might want to replicate that as we start to see them chasing down Freeze. He's knocked over and taken down. Hooney on the chase looks for Soren. Airwax comes around the side. Wild growth on Hooney to get a little CC action in there. And Fnatic are running wild all over these wolves. Airwax, all they can do to try and get away. Meanwhile, Soren, right over, junks him down, throws the axe into his back. And now Youngbuck has to pull away. They've lost two members. They've lost some flashes. They've lost it all, and Fnatic are pinging for this Baron. Zero hesitation on the hunt. Righteous Glory, Talisman of Ascension, all used to cause that gap. Flying from Huni, he hurts the sheep, since some of them left, since some of them right. Throws himself in as a, a one-man bomb. Airwax. Flashes aggressively and uses Wild Grove. And yeah, Yellowstar wants to you know, stop that from play happening. ping pong with Airwax. That's all he has to do right now, knock yep. him out. Well, they've got enough damage without him. They don't need the cow for sure. He'll just hang around the side. Airwax is looking to make a massive gap close. If this would be a Baron, still be a they don't know where he is. Move. Now they, they do. Know where he is. Parallel convergence comes down. The polymorph comes in. Ooh, he misses. Oh, Youngblood's oh. there. Airwax is in the pit. This could happen. Reckless, or rather, rain over <laughs> shut down, but he has to jump over. Airwax looks to take down Hooney. The Baron might have been a mistake because they took a little bit too much time. That's a double kill going over to Airwax. Febivin, meanwhile, is still able to clean up two of his own. But that could have been a lot worse. Airwax jumps in and Reckless outplays the heck out. Uh, if you're wondering what's happened or what happened there, uh, Yellowstar was looking for the WQ combo. He thought he was in range, so he popped his Q, but he did it too early. So he basically hit the floor. Then, uh, let's watch this again. I'll explain it once we actually see it. So Hex comes down. This is good. He miss he messes up his combo to the point where he presses Q, and he's like, oh. Uh, crap, you know, I have to W him out of there. But then Airwax does a smart thing. He dashes in aggressively, and this forces the W from from Yellowstar to alter the direction, and he knocks him in the pit by accident. It cleans up some kills, and then, of course, Echo can wind, rewind time and get out of there. So, unfortunate interaction, but ah, still Fnatic. Big Slightly lead here. Ahead. This could have been a throw. <laughs> the game was even, but... Ah. Props to Airwax, though. Single-handedly stopping a Baron, getting two kills. Forcing a summoner heal on Reckless. Good play. Yeah, did what they could in the moment. Nonetheless, they still find themselves down 10,000 gold. Fnatic eyeballing the dragon, but the Baron is more important Weapons here. like, guys, can I solo this? Like, no, just go mid lane. I need you this time. Clear waves. Don't do it. Don't get greedy. So rare mistake from Fnatic, but now they go ahead and start to force this Baron once again. Do they have the damage all together? There is an air wax around the side. Baron's taking a little time. They don't want to finish this. They just want to draw into wolves. They're going to pop on the hunt, and they're going to go. Around the back. There's on the hunt. There they turn their attention. Here we Unlimited go. is going to be the one. Young Buck as well. So to follow, he's able to execute his ultimate, but that is at a grievous cost. As now Soren being chased down. Hooney will pick him up. Who says Lulu can't carry? Two, three for zero in favor of Fnatic, and it's right back to Baron. And now they want to find Aerox. They know he's along in the back line. They know he wants to steal it. So he's like, okay, we'll bring it down to 5,000 gold. Come close to rules. Come stop us. Stop all those movement speed steroids and. You can't outrun that. Now Aerox, he's you know, trying to flank, but they know where he is. I doubt Fnatic will make the same the mistake. There. there we go. Aerox can't get involved. The Chaos Storm's down. Aerox is just burning away. He's going to jump back, rewind time. Can't make that outplay, though. Febivin knocks him down, and this Baron will be an easy cleanup for Fnatic. Oh, they are just doing so many things right here, Crepo. Yep, everything going right. One tiny mistake from Yellowstar, but in the, in the gist of things, Triple speed up steroid. Look at how quick they're going. They're rolling over. Soren, you can't stop that Olaf. Nobody can stop him. You have to kill him, but he's too tanky. Too much base damage. It doesn't matter if he's melee range. <laughs> he's Come, just too fast. He's just too fast. Coming out of this play, Yellowstar 0-0 zero, zero in 10 here. Supporting his way to the Fnatic squad. Fantastic shot calling too, because you don't see that. You don't know who's making these calls. Oh, oh good lord. That, that's crazy. That is not your Baron. Or that is not your Dragon, Copenhagen Wolves. That is Fnatic's Dragon. Yep. We'll take this, we'll take that, we'll take your jungle, we'll take your tower. We'll take this victory, is what Fnatic is saying. Well on their way to it. 18 kills to three. The gold lead just keeps spiraling out of the Copenhagen Wolves control. Another tower should be Fnatic's in just a moment. With this, they'll have knocked down the entire inner ring without it's, losing two of their outers. It's so weird to see so many Caitlyn's come back because she got buffed, but it was a very minor buff. If you look at how what well, changed, let's touch on that a little later as we see Fnatic they knocked these down too fast. They knocked these down too fast. The inhibitors now being fired on. 28 minutes in. Fnatic looking to close this one out nice and early. It's the hole blocked by Reckless. So with that, Fnatic back off with the Baron buff still in tow. 
Opening of Wolves, they've got to do, they've got to move fast, but this game is very much out of their hands. Yeah, Headshot got buffed a little bit on that, Caitlyn. Every eighth or later on seventh, or later on sixth auto attack, you get a Headshot. And it deals a little more damage against uh, targets with a lot of armor, but that really doesn't help Caitlyn all that much, in my opinion. Not in this situation. I mean, yes, you do a little more damage with tanks, but that means every lead to her hit. Don't Tanks multiple Cooney. times do that, and you can't afford that against this Fnatic lineup. You don't have time. There goes the Convergence. Airwax, he jumps on in. He rewinds time, but he is nearly blown up. Reckless, Hema Plague on him, and now Youngbuck could look to try and pick him off with the rest of Fnatic are here. Reckless goes on in. Wild Growth is on him. Doesn't have the damage. Can't quite get the crit, but they've still got the tower taken down. Fnatic give up no one. They'll be able to secure another in him and keep on going if they want, but they'll smartly back away once and again. And the Copenhagen Wolves wish they could rewind time. Not four seconds, but about 20 minutes to back before they went for that aggressive play in the mid lane where Huni teleported in, picked himself up three or four assists, and. <laughs> well, at least Airwax is having fun. Oh, the joys of. Like the anthem. TLDR, the Wolves done goofed uh, in the early game, and Fnatic give him an inch and they will snowball the game, make it an avalanche, and take yet another win. Eight in a row. All those wards Fnatic has in the Copenhagen Wolves base. You, you've got Youngbuck down on the bottom side trying to push back the dead inhibitor wave. There's Huni going to be pushing in the mid. Airwalk sent to deal with him now. Right, they're flanking on Freeze. Freeze, unlimited. Finds right, Yellow two seconds, Star. Two seconds. Uh, he's gone. Fanavin yeah. with the godlike kill. 7 0 oh, 5. Huni now looking to make a play on an Airwax who's. Forced to flash away just to try and stay alive here. Rain over and Huni with the wild growth on the chase. The help picks and the glitter lands. Huni picks him up. And now this looks like the end game for Fnatic. We don't star. need inhibitor turrets. Okay, I guess maybe we do. Deny Let the, minions do the it. showing of his mathematic capabilities. Count to five and then pulverize as the black shield goes down. But Femme says nope. 100 to zero in one second. Might be just again. Reckless chases free. Here we go. He's back. There's the Chaos Storm. It's going to follow Youngbuck onto the fountain. And it's going to take him down. It's Reckless who gets the Boomerang Blade to finish the job. Meanwhile, Nexus turret fired down. Febivin manages to barely stay alive before being taken out by Freeze. But that is not even going to matter. 30 minutes into the game. And Fnatic take themselves on 8 and 0 start. Clean. Very, very clean. Just as we expected from Fnatic. And this just puts even more emphasis on the matchup next week. It's going to be Game big. on a week. Both these teams, H2K and Fnatic, have just taken surgical victories. In, yes, surgical victories in, in very similar styles. The way League of Legends should be played, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Although Fnatic, they were kind of pinned down early. I feel if they got into the same situation against a better team, with a similar draft, mm -hmm. I feel there was a potential opening. It's really, really hard to say that, you know, and that's nitpicking. If but I had you have you, to. You almost. got it at this point. When the team is this good, you have to find what little there is to criticize. And one of them, a couple mistakes, and that early game. I want to see teams challenge Fnatic with a clear cut plan, like the Copenhagen Wolves almost had with this double poke composition. Find the right lanes. They had that lead in the bot lane, they had a scaling Jace in the mid lane, they neutralized Huni. In the top lane, but Huni, when you neutralize him in lane, if you can, he will just teleport down and help his teammates get the advantage. Exactly what he did. I can't stress enough that one play around the 10 minute mark. Instant teleport. Fevens gets ganks, instant teleport. Comes in. That just shows how well oiled the machine Fnatic is. But for these wolves, I mean, I, I don't know. You can't expect to beat Fnatic, but at the same time, they got rolled over. They did have a good start. They did have a good draft. But you make one mistake, like we said, over Solid and over takes. again. And then Fnatic will run over you every single time. You just can't do it. You have to be flawless. <laughs> That's hard. That's, it's difficult. I've played against teams like this before. It's just so incredibly unnerving because you, you think you're doing everything right, and then you're like, oh, just one mistake. If only we could go, go back to that play, try it again. But then yeah. five minutes later, they'll find an opening anyways because they give away so little. And that's why some of the games sometimes seem close, you know, like, oh, Fnatic, yeah. They didn't stomp them before 10 minutes because they don't give away anything, you know. They're fine with playing losing matchups because they keep it close enough for, for the snowball not to matter. You don't get strong enough to beat Fnatic to, like, in 2v3 situations. If Fnatic brings in an extra member like Rainover, then you lose that situation regardless every time. That's how, how they keep the lead small, so they can always get help from their teammates.
and Fnatic works so well together. Yeah, I mean, it's it's there's zero hesitation in the movements they make. You talked about it in that at first play that turned around Fnatic's fortunes in the early game, with Huni teleporting in before Young Buck, who was on the team that initiated the action, yeah. had time to react. I mean, it's not just who can hit the button faster. It's who's thinking in the same mindset. Who is making the call? Who is following up? Fnatic are a team that run at a thousand miles per hour. These guys literally just this can't game. be stopped. Yeah, figuratively and literally. Yeah. This well, yeah, when you've got a, when you've got the the coin, the talisman of ascension, you've got uh, the silver ultimate, and you've got righteous glory, the righteous glory, like all together. Yeah, on you the go full force that Zero was playing over this in, game in less than a second. Yeah, really, really zerg composition almost, and then it all came together once Rainover got into that backline. Then Lou just yeah, let's let's just walk, look at the pick side here. So you see how it all works together, and everybody's rushing so far forward that nobody is threatening Febivin. He ended his game with one death only, right at the end when he was call it trolling a little bit at the fountain. Yeah. And because nobody's threatening him, nobody can get to him because you have to run through that Olaf, run through that Lou, run through that Sivir and that Alistar, you know, yeah. and then eventually you can get to the victor and then he just pops ERQ and you're dead. Well, they focus so much attention and lane on him too. I mean, that was the start of that action. That was a, a, a big focus for Airwax and they just couldn't get anything done. Every, you know, the top lane traded even for a little bit. And then the bottom lane, yes, it was ahead, but as you mentioned, that's a winning matchup. They almost have to win that. Yep. And just, we, we sound like a broken record. Yeah. Well, there's Hooney, no much Hooney, else Hooney, to say Hooney. for it. He, he 21 bands. 3 1 and 10 on Lulu. He goes into a fifth champion pick. It was a flex pick, it was calculated. They, they made plays on He was able to get solo kills. You can't stop this guy. I just, I just want to see what the difference in approach will be in the second half of the split. Because mm -hmm. right now we've seen eight games. Next week we'll see every matchup played once. And then we can see if teams realize, okay, they're, they're the better team right now. We have to try something different. And I want to see teams potentially alter their ban strategy. Say, we call and shut down Huni. It's simply impossible. Time and time has proven again that it's not possible. Let's target somebody else. See if we can push Febin into a corner. I don't think so, but hey, yeah. you can try. Maybe Yellow Star, you know, because he's... He's the thing that dies all together, or rain over. I feel these double support roles in jungle and support could be the weakness of Fnatic. I doubt it, but mm -hmm. it's I, I want to see what HDK do against them because I feel like they they will have definitely been making note throughout this split, and obviously we heard probably talking about how it prepared for them. So we'll have to see. That's next week, of course. But for now, with that game over and done with, we're going to send it over the.